a story about a mountain climber who liked to explore the mountains by himself. And one day while he was climbing a mountain, he slipped and fell over a cliff. And as he was falling down the side of the mountain, he was able to reach out and gra grab onto a branch. And so there he was, hanging from the side of the mountain from that branch. And he shouted up, help, help, is anyone out up there? And then he heard a voice, hello, this is God. God? God, is it really you? Help me, I've fallen. And God said, do you believe in me? Oh, yes, God. Yes, you know I believe in you. Do you trust me? Well, of course, God. I trust you with everything. Then let go of the branch. <laughs> Is there anybody else up there? Someone once said that faith is not jumping to conclusions. Faith is concluding to jump. And that can be a pretty tall order for us, especially when most of us really just want to get by in life, just want to survive. But we're faced with new situations all the time. A sudden illness or the death of a loved one. A new boss at work or the assignment of new responsibilities. Tension in the family or a breakup in a relationship. Change happens all the time. And we're challenged to respond to change as people of faith. Yet often our first reaction to change in our lives is to jump to conclusions. We see a change, we don't like it, or we don't understand it. And so we just conclude that it's got to be bad news. We jump into survival mode and hold on to everything we can in an effort to keep things just the way they are. We find ourselves behaving a lot like King Herod in today's gospel story. When Herod learns of the birth of a newborn king, he becomes frightened of the future. He jumps to the conclusion that this birth could only threaten him, that it's definitely bad news. So he goes into survival mode, trying to control the future, resisting change, and trying to prevent it from taking its course. He lies to the Magi telling them that he wants to pay homage to this newborn king himself, when all he really wants to do is eliminate the threat. And when the Magi don't return with the information he wants, we know that eventually he orders that all the baby boys in Bethlehem be murdered. He destroys so much life around him, all because he jumped to conclusions. How different he was from the Magi. 
The Magi see a star on the rise and know that something new is at work. And without knowing more, they prepare themselves to respond to whatever and wherever that star may lead them. They take a leap of faith. They conclude to jump. And as a result, they discover the Christ child at the end of their journey. Now, neither the Magi nor Herod could control their future. The only difference was that the Magi understood that, and Herod did not. The Magi understood that faith isn't jumping to conclusions. Faith is concluding to jump. And so here we are, gathered together at the beginning of a new year. And we too are faced with choices of faith today, just as, the Her just as Herod and the Magi were 2,000 years ago. Because God is always working something new in our midst. And just like, the Herod, just like Herod and the Magi so many years ago, none of us can control the future. We can only control how we respond to the future. This time last year, the parish was facing an extraordinary change. The sudden death of Father Miller left us all reeling in pain and grief. And there were some folks, both inside and outside the parish, who immediately jumped to the conclusion that things did not bode well for St. Bernardine's. And that kind of negative thinking only added more pain and grief to the situation without contributing anything helpful to it. But the vast majority of you in the midst of your pain and grief, were willing to accept the situation in faith. You were willing to believe that the Holy Spirit would remain with you and continue to work among you. You were willing to jump into the situation, to make a leap of faith with hope for the future. Now, a year later, the issue isn't at all whether we can survive the change. The spirit of this congregation, the dedication of its members, and the diversity of its gifts and talents have ensured our survival. Our commemoration of the first anniversary of Father Miller's passing last month proved that we have survived the change. But mere survival is small thinking. It mimics Herod's attitude that the future is something to fear, that all we have to do is hold on to the past because we can't trust that the new and the unknown could possibly offer anything, some, anything better. No, the question for us today is whether we, like the Magi, can look to the heavens in search of a new tomorrow. Can we see the star at its rising to guide us to a brighter way? Can we let go of some of the things we know here and now and jump into the future that God has prepared for us all? During my first six months as pastor, I've been offering some reflections, mostly through my pastor's page in the bulletin, on some of the areas in which I see a star on the rise for our future. I see a star guiding us to a quality of worship that defines the vibrancy and joyfulness of this parish community. A worship in which all of us invest ourselves in praising God, 
by coming regularly to Mass, on time, and serious about listening to the Word of God. And serious about participating in the prayers and songs. And even possibly enhancing and expanding our own music program. A worship in which we, like the Magi, bring something to our adoration of God, rather than wondering what we're going to get out of it. I see a star on the rise over evangelization. If the story of Epiphany teaches us anything, it's that our faith is not intended to be hoarded for ourselves. It's to be shared with those who come from the, cor the farthest corners of the earth, for those who are not simply the chosen few. And if we're going to share good news with others, then we have to know who we are and what our needs are first. And so our evangelization team is working on a census for this year so that we can have a better idea just who we are and how we can strengthen our faith. And finally, I see a star above and setting over the local community. Our, neighbor, our New Year's Day community dinner and the 110 food and gift baskets we distributed at Christmas are awesome examples of our service to the community. But I see a star guiding us beyond that into the engagement and advocacy of the issues facing our neighbors on a day-to-day -day basis. Many of us may not live in this neighborhood, but we all worship in this neighborhood. And that makes us responsible for the welfare of this neighborhood. Worship, evangelization, and community these are the primary areas in which I see a star on the rise for us in the new year. And like the Magi, I don't know exactly where that star will lead us, but I'm confident that God is behind its rising. And I'm going to have to consult with many of you along the way, but I trust that even with the Herods we might encounter, God will lead us to a newborn king. We have survived the transition of a very difficult year. But life is so much more than mere survival. With the many changes that the future brings, it's easy to feel like we're just hanging on to what we have. But God has a wonderful journey in store for us if only we let go of our need to control the future and allow our faith to guide our way. God is raising a star before us. God is inviting us to leave the past and to step into the future. God is asking us not to jump to conclusions, but to conclude to jump. Amen. Amen.